We're going to localize the debate of the impact of the American election here on Times Now because that's what's most relevant to us. And joining us on the impact of uh, this result, first on the region and the subcontinent, I have member of the National Executive and he heads the foreign policy cell of the BJP, Sashadri Chari. He's joined by Zafar Hileli from Karachi, former Pakistan ambassador to the US. Maruf Raza, strategic affairs expert and consulting editor, is also joined by General Rashid Qureshi, former spokesperson to Musharraf. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining me on this debate. My first question to you is, uh, Maruf, if I can open with you, what will change in terms of India, Pakistan, Afghanistan and the equation in the subcontinent given the fact that Obama hasn't quite been very friendly with Pakistan in the last two years of his presidency? It's been going from bad to worse. So now that he's going to be there in the saddle for another four years, what does it mean for Pakistan and therefore for us? Well, on the first things first, I think Obama, for him, the tide began to turn, both in t internal politics and in terms of his American presence in the region, with the elimination of Osama bin Laden on 2nd May last year. After that, three things happened. One, it is left the Pakistani military embarrassed and clearly not so much an ally of the U.S. as it had pretended to be. Secondly, it allowed Obama and his in the administration to declare that they had achieved some kind of strategic victory in the AFPAC region and the war in Afghanistan, and then they spelt out an exit plan. So therefore, what is going to happen now is the implementation of the exit plan for the Americans by 2014. There are various options being touted from, uh, you know, partial exit <coughs> systematically over a period of time beginning from now. And the other option is that America will keep a presence there which could range from a reasonable military presence to just special forces. Either way, there are two issues that are of interest to us. One is, President Obama is certainly not in taking any more nonsense from Pakistan. In fact, after reopening of the road link from Pakistan into Afghanistan, when there are a few <coughs> months, Pakistan imposed an embargo on American movement, America has continued with its drone attacks. So in many ways, he is the drone war president now. The second aspect, which is equally important, and we have to see that, is Obama has not only promised India a support for a seat in the UN Security Council, but also spelt out India as its partner for the 21st century. So clearly, there is going to be more pressure on Pakistan to deliver. Pakistan is going to be more embarrassed with Obama and his administration who knows the games that Islamabad and Rawalpindi have been playing and there is likelihood of betterment of ties between India and the US. Now how much the government in India is going to respond to it okay. is anybody's guess. Certainly not too much on the China issue. Zafar Hilali, I want you to respond to Maru. Bad news for Pakistan? The relationship was anyway going bad, as is evident from Obama's comments during his third presidential debate, where he said if we had asked Pakistan for permission in the context of Osama bin Laden, we would not have gotten him. That showed the deep level of distrust between the Obama administration and your government. How are you going to deal with another four years of the Obama administration? Well, we'll deal with the Obama administration and Obama and his insults in the way that we have dealt, which is in our national interest. If he over exceeds the limit, there will be another ban on the movement of goods. He Anup has succeeded quite well thus far in alienating the people of Pakistan right. and in insulting the government. So if he wishes to continue like that, and he thinks he can uh, get his way, that will be, we'll see, we'll see what that happens. But Obama, I think, since the last three or four months has simmered down and is talking quietly and cooperating. And that's how we would like it to be. Because he must surely know, even though he's now four years in that post, he should know that beating, trying to bludgeon us into doing well, his will does not work. Well, you're the oh, way, no. what you're oh, saying no. seems to indicate that Pakistan, Pakistan will, if required, you know, put greater pressure on, on, uh, on, on Washington, strategically blackmail Washington if required, in order to get its way. 
But I'm not sure here. Are you, Seshadri Chari, that that is going to work? Because Obama has defended the yes, use sir. of drones. Even Mitt Romney has been in favor of drone attacks. They have established positions on the subject. Will a strengthened Obama give in to Pakistan's blackmail on strategic routes? Well, I, Watch, I, I put that I question. That this yeah, I, I put that question to Seshadri Chari, Mr. Hilali. Yes. Let's get the another perspective, Mr. Hilali. Coming back to you. Going by, going by what, uh, Who? going by what, Mr. Jafar Hilali has said. Yes. I only hope uh, he is not speaking the official uh, version of the Pakistani establishment. If this is going to be the attitude of the Pakistani establishment, I think the. U.S.-Pakistan relationship is going to nosedive ah. because both Obama and Mitt Romney <coughs> has made it very clear that they will not uh, put up with the radicalization of the society, radicalization of the military, radicalization of politics in Pakistan, which has been a very great, to a very great extent, a great problem not only for the U.S., which is miles away from Pakistan, but to this region which has seen some of the worst terror attacks, not only in this region, but all over the world. So I think the U.S. attitude towards Pakistan is more of democratizing the polity there. And if Pakistan is able to patch up with the U.S. and live up to the expectations of the world, it's not just because, it's not just the U.S. which is expecting Pakistan to be more tolerant, less radical and more democratic. The whole country, the whole of India requires it and all the countries around Pakistan also require a more stable Pakistan seeing the way the world economy is moving. Therefore, it will be in the best interest not only of Pakistan but also of India if Pakistan is able to bring down this rhetoric of we will deal with the US the way we have been dealing with and all these things are not really going to help Pakistan in any way. So, having said that, I think we have to, we have also to rethink about what the U.S. has done to this region in the last four years. The Obama administration has actually not been able to tackle the issues in this region because they probably do not have a proper insight into what is really the ground realities in Afghanistan, the ground realities in Pakistan, the ground realities in Southeast Asia and also the ground realities between India and her neighbors. I, I think this requires a lot of study. India has to study the Indo-US relationship in the last four years. What are the pitfalls where we have not been able to tackle the situation, where we have not been able to convince the Americans enough to take a proper outlook. And I think if, if we are able to look into this in a broader framework, the next four no. years of Obama administration could probably be more useful to this region. And we are more but concerned you, but, but about... But the Pakistanis have to begin. But the Pakistani side has to begin. General exactly. Qureshi, the Pakistani side exactly. has to begin. I fully agree with that. By, by toning down their aggression. You will and have to tone down your Pakistan aggression. Agreement will not General help. Qureshi. I want you to respond to the point yes. made by Seshadri Chari and Maru Fraza. You, now Obama comes back strong. Obama told you in March. Obama told you in May. And Obama told you in the course of the presidential election that he is not going to indulge an over-aggressive Pakistan anymore. Do you have a choice, General Qureshi, but to pipe down? Uh, Maru, uh, you did not let Mr. Halali finish and uh, you intervene and he could not finish and complete his argument. First of all, you see, I when you start <laughs> questioning in a way as if you're threatening Pakistan, there is an automatic reaction from Pakistan that don't threaten us like this. You have your experts who I've listened to and I totally agree with my friend when he says that the United States will have to have a fresh look at how it deals with India and Pakistan. There is no doubt about that. Uh, nobody's, uh, there's no rhetoric from Pakistan. There is no effort by Pakistan to uh, compete with the United States in bringing uh, or subjugating Afghanistan, which is what the United States has been doing over the last 
so many years. Now, uh, yes, Obama is there for another four years. Yes, in the past, there have been incidents where tensions have arisen. Yes. And both countries, let me add, the United States as well as Pakistan has been able to resolve those issues. Whether have they? What uh, Hillary Clinton has said or what Obama, the way they responded and ultimately whether it was that uh, uh, attack that the Americans did on a base, on an outpost on the Pak Afghan border so, uh, or the stoppage of the supplies. Is now, that therefore, so? Therefore, having said and resolved these by saying that they, are, they did not mean it and it was a mistake, I think general, we can move forward. General, I do not think general, that there will really additional have tension. You, general, you actually believe that you have resolved your problems uh, with the United States of America? No, and no, no, no. With hold all on, respect, Zafar Hilali himself began by talking about the tension that is there between both sides and the general impression is that the re-election of Barack Obama is Islamabad's greatest nightmare. No, there's no nightmare in this. Obama will be able to communicate with us and we'll be able to communicate with well, Obama as nations communicate with each other. Well, let me tell so you what you is... You don't have to... Uh, no, yes. no, for example, let me, take, let me take a key point. I take the issue of Afghanistan. And we are looking now, and I'm going to open up this debate, and, and I'm sorry, General, if you feel that I stopped Safar Ilali from com completing his comment. I, I plead guilty. It was me. It was not my uh, colleague Maruf who did that. But I'd like to pick up the question of Afghanistan and go back to Maruf and then go back to Zafar Ilali. Robert Blake was in New Delhi recently. And I have reason to believe that Robert Blake plays a very important role, Zafar Ilali, in determining what happens in South Asia policy. You're already shaking your head, Zafar Ilali. But this is what he said. He said that we see India as the linchpin of the future growth of Afghanistan and the region. Because India is going to be the largest market in the region. He made it quite clear, Zafar Ilali. So the Obama administration want say, will, yeah. want, will want greater engagement for India and Afghanistan, which is also Pakistan's greatest nightmare. Zafar Ilali, you disagree? Yeah, listen, yes. you can suck up to the Americans as much as you want to, but get I, some facts straight. So First of all, the Americans have been defeated in Afghanistan. They are leaving Afghanistan without their objectives being achieved. You talk as if the whole world revolves around America. So get real, number one. <laughs> Secondly, we don't know who this chap Blake is. I've never, this is the first time I'm hearing his name. If he is influential, he must be like Rydell and the others. Say so the Assistant Frankly, Secretary of State for South Asian Affairs. Thank as you. As far as of us. Yes. Now listen to me, now listen to me. This Mr. Obama, who makes damn good speeches, but his actions aren't so hot. Obviously, he just won the election. Let me tell you that he has, he must have realized that after Salala, where he murdered 24 Pakistani soldiers and refused to apologize. Yes. After the impact of the drones, which is now becoming more and more unpopular. Look, I don't deny it's an effective weapon. It just makes America more unpopular. It kills civilians. And for every man killed by the drone, 10 more are going to take his place. He knows that. 